So the interior was finished with a composite tongue and groove flooring and the bed was designed after Susie's design. It was a really good design so we decided to use it. It does slide forward when we want to turn it into a couch. We beveled the ends there so it'll just click with a little friction right in and then when you go to pull it out it'll just slide right out. We wanted uh, enough room for two people so we did run it past the door frame slightly. Um, it is through bolted to the bulkhead there so it's one piece with the trailer. Uh, it gave us 22 inches of storage. We do put two 22 inch cushions. Gives us about 44 inches of sleeping space. Uh, all the access is right under here. And uh, it's been a, a functional bed for us so far. And uh, we'll go ahead and show it to you now. So when this is in uh, a sleeping position, it gives us each 22 inches. And if you were in here for extended periods of time, maybe it was rainy or a little too hot outside, simple. You grab the back of it, start the it up slightly, grab the base, push it in, and it'll instantly go straight into a couch position. Uh, what's nice about that is when you do pull this all back, it does give you access to interior, but when you're not using that area, it is a nice clean cut, it looks like it should. So our front storage solutions isn't just storage. We do have the five baskets up front and the five smaller baskets in the top. But with that, we also have the dehumidifier. We have our LED lamp. We have a power monitor down here. And we also have two USBs and a USB-C, all for any charging needs you may have. Now with the waggle, this senses power loss and temperature for when your pet's with you. So we decided to install that as well. The LED strip that's hidden up here is run off a RGB controller, so it will change colors. We normally keep it to white to give you the best ambient light. Now all of these systems are 12 volt and do run off the power system that was shown in video two. If you are boondocking and you do not have 110, every single thing in this camper will run minus the AC. The front storage solution was still built with the same three quarter inch high grade plywood that the galley was built out of. We trimmed it out with these one by twos and we attached it to the composite wall with these 90 degree aluminum brackets, the same that you'll find in the galley. We attached it to all four mating services in the four corners. It's been structurally strong, it hasn't moved at all and we're super happy with the way it came out. curtains you see were handmade by my wife, nothing was purchased. The attachments are with screws. With the right length screw in this composite, the composite has been very strong. We've had no complaints or issues with it. The lighting fixtures are 12 volt LED. Uh, they're a good spotlight for reading or anything else you may need uh, some what of a brighter light for. What I do like about them is these fixtures do rotate in every direction. The RGB strip in the back is the same RGB strip that's in the galley and in the front using the same remote. So it will function the same with no need for multiple remotes. We do actually have more storage solutions up top because of the way the galley was built. And there are some other decorative lights that we may choose to use from time to time. The one thing that was important to me when I was designing this build was storage. That's what's most important. So I made sure that we had room for our shower bags, uh, my own little bag for toiletries, any of the other miscellaneous camping stuff. You tend to have flashlights and everything else you take camping. Um, my husband's toiletry bag as well as his shower bag. We each get two cubes for our clothing, um, so his as well. And then in the middle, kind of our miscellaneous everything uh, that you would have camping. So we have lanterns, of course, little vacuum, and then we also have the halo view for if we're in one of those areas that I kind of want to see what's going on around me. My husband installed three cameras around the camper. So here we're at Bayhan State Park. 
I could see my neighbors next to me and completely behind me, which I wouldn't normally have because we don't have a window. But I like that I can get almost a 360 view of what's going on around us. I'm a storage fanatic, so I've got more boxes for games, playing cards, some extra cords, books, magazines, and then I like keeping a little tiny one so when you take your glasses off at night, instead of having to reach all the way to the front cabinet, I can just throw my glasses in there. And I also keep an extra remote for the lights, so just something easy to grab during the night, and you can never have too much storage. I want to show you some other things that I really like using for camping. These tables have always been popular for a long time. They just click open, fold down, be packed away. We actually have multiple of these. I have one and Liz has one because they lay flat and when we get to our campsite, you can set them down. The other thing that a lot of you runaway owners love when we come to rallies is footstools. These things are a dream from Amazon because who doesn't like to put their feet up while they're relaxing? And that's why we're camping, right? So these things are a must buy for Amazon. They come in a set of two. So we decided to go with a front storage rack from Runaway. The problem with that is it does limit you on what size toolbox you can put on the front of the Runaway. Harbor Freight does sell this metal toolbox and it's the exact dimensions you would need to mount in front of the storage rack but not interfere with the hitch. So if you're looking for a storage solution on the front of your camper, that's a toolbox that can be locked, but you also utilize your front rack, head over to Harbor Freight. This box is still available. We used to own a Rhino rack but we have a dog. What she loves to do is tangle herself up. So the OVS awning, it actually is freestanding. It does come with legs that you can drop down. It's not needed though. These are all aluminum welded and it has no need for any legs. We've fallen in love with this thing because our small dog loves to run around on its leash and there's no way for it to hang up on this OVS awning system. So if you're shopping for an awning system for your runaway and you're unsure what you should get, this is well worth the money. Another reason for my galley design in the build is we've been tent campers in the past and I wanted to make sure that everything in the kitchen was all together. No other boxes are needed. So part of the build is we have these little baskets in the corner. I have four of them. So I keep a lot of our coffee, spices, the regular things you need to cook. I keep like our coffee cups, um, any kind of kettles and other plates and things we may need. The other basket, kind of snack food. And then I have my kitchen basket. I keep my soaps, uh, aluminum foil, the regular kitchen basics. Um, for my drawer, I really like the little tiny utensils you can get from the Dollar Tree or like Hobby Lobby. They're just simple and small, fit what we need. And then I have obviously our other uh, pots, pans, bowls, and things like that. And then with the build, I still have extra storage. This holds additional pans or anything else I need kitchen related. I do kind of keep like toothpaste and toothbrushes back here for the sink. And then if I take this out, I still have even additional storage under here for like a little griddle or our larger pan when we want to have this fully for our stove. So uh, a tiny little spot, but so much I can stick in tiny, tons of little, little corners. So that's the kitchen. So yeah, that pretty much sums it up. This is our 2021 Range Runner. And we've had it just about a year and a little bit more. We've got about 25,000 miles on it. So everything's held up very well. We're very pleased with it. But I did want to take an opportunity to show you Bay of Honda State Park. We were here all day to do some filming. So I wanted to show you where Liz and I live year round. Uh, it is definitely beautiful. So enjoy the ending of this video as we show you some of our favorite parts.
But we really enjoyed you watching our video today and hanging out with us, seeing the ending of the video where we got to show you some of our cool spots in Bay of Honda. Uh, stay tuned next time when we'll show you a little bit more of what we got going on in our truck, our overlanding build, and some other things we do. So, see you next time.